Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and today we are continuing our LEGO Star Wars custom mock review series, namely focusing on the many different models that you can find on BrickFault.com, which is a website where mockers are able to sell the instruction manuals to some of the most complex and intricate LEGO designs. Now, throughout the series, it is my goal to review every single Brick Vault Star Wars model. From all the TIE Fighters, which you can see up here, we actually started with the TIE Brute. You can check that out linked in the description below. It should be in the same playlist as this, as well as just some other stuff. We've got like the A-Wings here, some of the Rebel Fighters, and going all the way over to here, there's even some much larger models like the Imperial Interdictor here, which was seen in Star Wars Rebels in the Expanded Universe. And going on all the way back, we even have stuff like a massive Razor Crest and Hammerhead Corvette. There are so many things to see here, and I can't wait to bring reviews to all of you. But for today, our focus is a revamped version of the droid gunship. So right above me, it's a little bit crowded, but you can actually see the different vessels from the Separatist fleet, namely some droid gunships right there. As you can see, those are the official LEGO set model versions of the droid gunships. But this is something truly special, because the model we're looking at today is completely revamped from the ground up, surprisingly enough actually does integrate some of the LEGO UFO pieces, which if you come over here, you can see the original UFO sets from the 1997 era, which is very interesting to see that actually being factored into a modern Star Wars mock. But there is so much more to see here, I actually have built this to be the troop carrier version, so you can see a ton of different battle droids on the bottom of it. I can't wait to get into the review you, and do keep in mind, a lot of these models are meant to be more for display, not really for play, so they're a lot more fragile than normal, but some are better than others. And that's why I'm here to bring you a review of this custom droid gunship. And so let's jump into it right now. So here is the troop carrier version of the droid gunship. Now you may be wondering, Duck Bricks, why is the model upside down? Well, in case it wasn't obvious, this is not the most stable of builds, at least when these are attached. It sure has a very cool effect while flying, but it definitely does not stand up like that. So let me demonstrate exactly how this works. And the piece has already kind of fallen off, that's fine, I'll get that later. So. Most of the gunship is very, very, very solid, especially for a custom mock. There's a couple things here and there that could be better, but for the most part it's very solid. That all kind of gets thrown out when you actually install the troop carrier device because, as you can see, it is literally just placed on different kind of Technic pneumatic T pieces, lightsaber hilts, and nunchuck hilts, and then the super battle droids are just wedged in via illegal connections. There are not stud connections on the back of the super battle droids, so they're kind of just wedged in illegally, and you kind of hope for the best and let them fly. Again, very very cool look that it achieves, but for this review I will be taking them off because otherwise it'll be impossible to show you anything else without them crumbling to pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very very carefully detach these, which I would say if you're careful with it, it typically is okay. Let's just be super... Oh, oh okay, that broke, but that's fine, that's fine. Let's just be super careful, set these boys aside. And we can get into the main review. So let's, oh, okay. Yep, let's get that aside. Very cool look, definitely not stable, only for display, and literally only if you plan to hang it from the ceiling, otherwise I would not bother making this part. But with our guys out of the way, let's actually take a look at the actual droid gunship itself. So this is one of the most iconic Separatist vehicles. Notice how I'm trying to avoid touching it by the head because it will break off there. But here it is. This is the droid gunship without the actual attachment. And you can see that this takes a very, very different approach to the build construction than most LEGO builds. The way I want to structure this review is by talking a little bit about the building experience, then going into how this is built, the building techniques, what's good, what works and what doesn't, and finally the aesthetics and what I think of the overall model as a whole and how it plays. So starting off with the building techniques and the building experience. The building experience was fairly okay despite some very very frustrating moments, one of which I simply did not do because it seemed like too much effort, which I will explain, but for the most part this is fully complete. Now do not let the UFO panels trick you into thinking that this is a standard build or a kind of a not very parts heavy build because these are really just used for the top to capture the UFO like shape. 
And as we go to the bottom, there's a lot more things going on here, especially in terms of sides on the studs on the side construction here, different system stuff that has a lot of different crazy things. So quite a lot of fascinating building techniques were used to actually put this together. Certainly a lot of very illegal techniques as well, and we'll also go into some of those throughout the review. Overall though, I am very impressed with the amount of quality and design that you actually can get out of a vehicle like this. This is an incredibly impressive mock and I think that the shaping of it is absolutely perfect. We have never gotten a droid gunship set to date that looks this good and looks this accurate to episode 3 and the Clone Wars. And the reason for that is because, oh, some pieces are falling off here as you can see, not the most sturdy of things, but this just uses some of the most interesting building techniques ever that really do achieve a lot of fascinating shaping that is pretty much impossible to do in an official LEGO set because simply it would be way, way too fragile. So let's talk about some of those right now. I think the biggest offender for me that was actually very frustrating to put on are these things right here. So you might be wondering how exactly this technique was achieved to have these studs curved around the back here like so. And the answer is exactly the way you are imagining, and that was, I was literally just told to kind of arrange the studs in a circle and hope for the best. This obviously is not a legal technique whatsoever, it was a very very strange one and frustrating one to do because either you push too hard and they just don't reach the end, so they're squeezed on too tight, or you don't push down enough and you have them too stretched out and then when you push it tighter, it'll get tighter in some areas and loose in others and it just doesn't get the curve right. I nearly gave up many many times while doing these, I think it took me literally like 10 to 15 minutes just to put these on, so a very very frustrating thing and you can imagine how I felt when I realized I had to do it again on the front with the gray studs. Sure, the effect looks really good. This is such a cool effect, but to be completely honest, I feel like the same effect could have been achieved by using a very slightly modified building technique, and that is running a flex tube through the hollow stud versions of these studs. The hollow stud in trans neon orange and light gray does exist. In fact, this model actually does tell you to cut up a flex tube for a different part, so it's not like they're against that. I really feel like if you just had a tube running through them, that would have solved a lot of problems and made my life a lot easier while building. So that being said, if you want to build it yourself, nothing is stopping you from just doing that, which seems like it would work just fine. Now, that being said, there are a couple other things that do stress the elements and are illegal techniques such as using the cupboard pieces. These are actually the cupboard elements for some of the drawers there. I don't want to take them off right now because I'm worried that this will snap, which it actually does tend to do when you do this technique. But the way it works is you kind of wedge the handle for the cupboard opener into the stud receptacle there, which is a very illegal technique which will permanently damage these pieces. But hey, it looks pretty cool to have some detailing on the bottom. And again, for a display model, that's not too big of a deal. Moving on to the top here, the one technique that I personally just did not do was using four different hemispheres of flex tubes to go through here. You may think that that is a simple task, however the instructions were very very clear that you had to first preheat them with a hair dryer and actually get it to a soft curving material to allow the curve to go right and not just to be straight across. I did not want to have to bother to do that, so I simply left it off. I'm sorry, I just didn't want to do it, but you can imagine what it would look like with just an extra tube of flex hosing right there. Now finally, there are a couple of other things if you may notice that the way that this particular element is attached here, the bar does not have enough length to be held in by the two clips. That's a very minor thing, but just something LEGO probably would not do ever in an official set. You've got another one of those illegal techniques wedging in the cupboard doors here. And altogether, there's a lot of very strange things throughout the build. These are of course legal because you just kind of put this on top of minifigure hands and pray for the best. And secondly, probably the second most frustrating thing about this particular build, aside from the transparent orange pieces and gray pieces there, was putting this blue piece in. Now you might be wondering what exactly was frustrating about this. Well, the thing was that you first have to install the head, which comes with these large wedge pieces, then you install a piece that this attaches to, and then you install this. The problem is, it's really hard to explain without taking it off, and I'm going to be completely honest, I do not want to do that because it will take me, I kid you not, 30 minutes to get back on. It took me probably around 25 minutes to get on the first time. And that is because this blue piece attaches by two studs here, and that's held in a very tenuous connection onto some studs on these side pieces on the inside. 
If you push too hard, the studs on the side pieces on the inside will break. If you don't push hard enough, you may break off one of these. Also, if you push too hard, you may disconnect these gray pieces or just have it attached to the wrong section. All in all, this was very, very frustrating to put on, and yes, I did try actually taking this off, attaching the connectors onto it, and then putting it on vertically. However, that also doesn't work because there's so much hollow space in this part that it just collapses inwards. So, a very, very frustrating part of the assembly, but one that honestly I feel was very necessary, especially when viewed from the bottom. You really gotta have that covered up there. So, it looks really good. It almost looks like the piece was made to fit mesh well with the head. It's just very frustrating to build. Other than those though, which I understand may sound like I'm really ragging on the build, and I really am not. I mean, this was a fantastic build and one that really blew me away, and honestly is a lot more sturdy than most of the other Brick Vault mocks. Most of the other ones I've dealt with are a lot more fragile than this. This actually holds itself together quite well on the inside. So, Besides those minor quibbles and maybe some major ones with the way that those tubings are done, but aside from those things, the build for this went together very smoothly, parts went together in places that they were meant to and made sense, and altogether it feels like a very sturdy build overall when it's done. Despite the finicky bits, which were really hard to assemble, like the blue piece here and the gray pieces and the orange pieces, when it's fully together, this feels very solid. I mean, you can swoosh this around and for the most part, things will not break. Sure, the very elaborate and large missile pods are only held on by one clip, so you could just very easily break those off, and you can't really land this on the ground without breaking the head, because again, the gun piece is angled permanently downwards, so there are a few minor cons, you can't really set this down on the ground whatsoever, but if you're holding it and hanging it from the ceiling, which is exactly what I am doing, this is a fantastic model. And now to talk about accuracy for a bit. So obviously, as you can see, this is very, very accurate to the on-screen representation. I am again very impressed with how the head is built. I feel like it really captures the almost face that these things have, which didn't really come across too well in the official LEGO models, but for this one right here, I feel like it really did come across very well. And I also really like the interior bit of it here with this kind of large reactor-like dish in the center. Everything works fantastically, and the use of the 1998 or 1997 UFO pieces was really inspired, and despite them being old gray, they don't really stand out too much. They honestly just kind of look like more armor plating, and the gray doesn't have to be consistent really anyways for a Star Wars vehicle like this. But with that, I feel like we've about summed up pretty much everything there is to say about this model. Finally, I do want to mention the price. Thankfully, one thing that was really, really helpful is that not only were the instructions professional grade and really made you feel like you were building an official LEGO set in terms of the presentation, but they also have a cheaper parts version, which actually does allow you to build this with slightly different colors using cheaper elements, so they do have an alternate instructions there for that, which looks very similar, but you can just choose to do that if you want to save money. And there are also different callouts in the instructions itself if you want to substitute pieces for ones that cost less money. Altogether though, I did try to build the just standard raw form of this model, and it cost me around 100 US dollars to put this together from Bricklink. Your mileage will definitely vary because again, I was trying to consolidate things and buy from one particular store, so obviously that did increase prices quite a bit. If I did want to spend the time and go through my own parts collection, I probably could have also cut down the cost a lot, but I simply just didn't want to spend the time doing that. So do expect to spend a lot more money on a model like this, which is a lot more dense and compact than many of the other droid gunship models that LEGO's released in the past, but I would say for this type of model, it's really worth it if you want a solid display piece. Oh, and last but not least, actually definitely not least, if you are not like me and do not want to hang it up, the instructions actually do include parts lists and instructions to have a stand which is made specifically for this model. It's actually a really cool stand that depicts it in flight, you can build it yourself, but unfortunately, obviously, I did not even want to do that because I felt like it would be a waste of money because this is hanging from my ceiling anyways. But with that, let's now swoosh off and end the review. I feel like a good way to end the review is showcase the brand new mock version of the droid gunship hanging up alongside some of the other versions. I still have to hang up the 2008 one, but pretty much all of the other versions are there, and it really is a very striking difference between the LEGO sets and the mock itself. Obviously, this did come with a lot of trade-offs, and I definitely wouldn't say this is something to play with and mostly just for display. 
And that concludes our review of the Droid Gunship Mock. Like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. And thank you so much, as usual, for tuning into Duck Bricks. Stay tuned for even more mock reviews on the way.